This is Bart, and I want to tell you about a tooth fairy in my town. Only, she's not exactly the one parents tell you about as a kid. Thing is, ordinary fairies come for children's lost baby teeth and leave a bit of money. But our SCP fairy pulls them out herself. Can you imagine how creepy that is? Well, I can, because I almost lost my own fang teeth. Well, first thing first, let me think about mm, where to start. But please, like and comment first. Who knows? Maybe this crazy creature has been in your town. We we're going to celebrate my little sister Angie's birthday. She's a little dandelion. There's just no way to put it. She's so cute. And she's younger than me. She's only five. But she's smart and uh, advanced beyond her years. She knows more about how to build a dollhouse than I do. I gave her a huge Lego set for a house. And she just dreamed of making it huge enough to fit all the dolls. Angie was thrilled with the gift. But then it turned out that some of the pieces were missing or lost. I don't know. She got really upset right at the party. I was about to go deal with the shop, but my parents said that we'd celebrate and then we'd figure it out. So we did. When then the party was over, her girlfriend's parents came to pick up the girls. One of them had her purse dropped in it, and it was those Lego constructors. My sister was shocked. They started arguing with Sarah. My sister's friend assured her that she didn't do it. But then she confessed, like she was jealous and decided to make a nuisance of herself. Angie said that she wouldn't be friends with her anymore, and that was the end of the evening. The next day, we heard that terrible thing happen to Sarah. Someone had come to her in the night and pulled out her some teeth. The girl was scared out of her wits. She was fine, generally apart from the bloody pillow and toothless mouth. Sarah's parents contacted the police. After lunch, Angie came home in tears. She'd been bullied at school by a boy called Mark. He tipped her up and she'd fallen. I wanted to confront him, but Angie said that she'll deal with it with herself. The next day, Mark didn't come to school. Someone had also pulled some of his teeth out at night. Crazy, right? This was beginning to worry the parents of the pupils. The police started to check why this was happening to the pupils of this particular school. Another week later, two girls had experienced the same exact thing. The mom came concerned. She decided to keep Angie out of school until things calmed down, and it seemed to get quieter. Over the weekend, I decided to take Angie to the cafe for ice cream. The waitress wasn't there for a while and Angie got angry and pulled out some kind of plasticine like thing. She started crumpling it and asked her what it was. She said that she found it in her room on her birthday. She thought it was someone else's present. I went to pick it up but Angie wouldn't let me. She said that she didn't like it being touched by strangers. It sounded strange but I didn't insist. Then a waitress came to us and Angie burst out like, where'd you go? We've been sitting here for the last hour. The waitress gave us a leering look and gave us ice cream without the berries. But Angie wanted berries. She went into a rage. I've never seen her like this before. She shouted that she's not coming to this cafe anymore. Got up, left. I ran after her. What's wrong with you, Angie? Nothing. Are you not going to defend me? She's stupid. Don't say that. We just came to the cafe and you're just acting like a fool. Well, then don't go out with me anymore. Fine. I won't. Angie took out the weird plastine thing and started crumpling it in her hand. We got home and went to bed. I didn't talk to Angie, and as soon as I fell asleep, I felt a strange stirring on my face. I opened my eyes and saw what looked like something strange, like a pair of pliers only with eyes and alive. Ah! I yelled, and this something grabbed my tongue, started panting, and it grabbed my front teeth and started pulling them. It was very painful. At the same time, I couldn't even move because my hands were tied to the same plasticine I'd seen from Angie. Eventually, with great difficulty, but I managed to break free. I loosened my tooth, but it didn't have time to pull it out. And then it crawled away somewhere. I was all sweaty, ran into Angie's room, but I couldn't find any plasticine anywhere. And some thoughts crept into my head. In the morning, I went to the doctor to check my teeth. He asked what was wrong. I said that he wouldn't believe me, but I told him anyway. The doctor suddenly straightened up, said that he believed me, and took off his dressing gown, what the logo was. Who are you? I work for the SCP organization. Right now, we're looking for the SCP-2002 object or AKA Tooth Fairy. Does he look like a plasticine? E yeah, that's right. My little sister has it. This object controls the human mind. It needs human bones to survive and decided that teeth would be very good building blocks too. These objects are very intelligent, but in order to act, they have to trigger emotions in humans, like aggression. That's when I remembered that Angie hasn't been herself lately. Turned out, the SCP fairy had chosen her as her transport and hiding place. 
no one would notice that the girl had plasticine in her hand. And even though she'd been dragging it everywhere she goes, the SCP selects a target because the host had become aggressive and by doing so they managed to scan the enemy. And at night they sneak into their homes and pull out their teeth and then collect them to build something. The doctor didn't say too much information. He said that it was classified. He put me in a sleep and in his office. When I woke up, it was already the night. I ran home to find Angie not at home, her assembled Lego standing in the middle of the room. My parents were in a meeting, so I didn't call them. I started looking in her room for SCP-2002 and tripped over the house where, oh no, it was teeth, human teeth. I started to panic, so it was all true. I didn't know where to look for my little sister and the doctor, so I went back to the dentist to find something. But as soon as I entered the office, the phone rang. I picked it up and the voice said, We have your little sister. She's okay, she's fine, but come to the address. They told me the address and I had to come there. On the spot, I saw a whole room of people in a uniform with the SCP sign. Angie saw me, but she didn't come near. She was being aggressive. There was an SCP object around her neck. It was sucking on her neck and the staff said that the only thing that could help was me. But how? I asked. They told me that what I had to do. It turned out that the SCP-2002 was full of aggression and if the subject doesn't give in, it just looks for another person and affects them as well. So I went over to Angie, sat down next to her on the ground and started talking. At this time, the members of the organization moved further away. I pulled Angie's favorite gum out from the pocket. Remember the time you tried to blow a bubble out of bubble gum? You didn't succeed and I decided to show you how to do it. My bubble was so big that when it burst, the gum blew apart and stuck to my hair. And you didn't get confused. You cut my fringes off. I wore a cap for the month because I looked like Mr. Janet. Angie had a slight smile on her face and I continued to tell stories going on and on about happy moments of our lives. Until Angie finally laughed at the memory. I noticed that the SCP fairy became uncomfortable and he started to pull away from her, more and more, and then BAM fell to the ground. At this point I grabbed my little sister and ran away, while the SCP was crawling on the ground, disgusting, looking for a host. Then one of the staff let off a gas and made the plasticine freeze in a daze. Turns out it was propane. The SCP is neutralized in the gas environment for a while. He was grabbed with some tongs and placed in a jar filled with the same gas. A group of people immediately drove off to their black car. Angie was given candy. It was an amnesiac. She fell asleep immediately. The doc came up to me and told me that I needed to complete the dental procedure and gave me a card to call. We went home and my parents never found out. I knew it was better to keep quiet about it, so I kept it a secret. I bagged my teeth and put them in the bin. I had to go to the doc that day. I had already guessed that he wanted to erase my memory, but I was basically fine with that. But the moment I got my teeth out, I had a rustling in the bin. Got a bit closer. Something jumped out. It was some kind of a rat. Only not exactly a regular one. Came at me at the breakneck speed and bit me, then ran off somewhere. My legs bled. I treated the wound and then I felt weird. Then mom came out and asked if I had taken the garbage out and I got so angry. You take your own garbage out, I shouted at her. And then dad stepped in and said that I had no right to raise my voice at my mom and punish me by taking my phone away. I didn't go to the dock and went to bed. In the middle of the night, I got really hot. Went to get a drink of water and as soon as I walked past my parents' bedroom, I saw my mom and dad sleeping. I don't know how, but I automatically picked up a pair of pliers and went to their bedroom. All I could think about was their teeth. If you liked the video, then please comment down below, like, and don't forget to subscribe.